Good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a long day, but this is the last session, I believe. Um, so um, as Samantha mentioned, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about um, shaping high velocity deals. And we thought we'll go a little bit deeper into that, why that concept is important at this point of time, why the time is right for that. Uh, and then talk about how we have supported some service providers in the past in driving those high velocity deals in the recent past. So um, if you really look at it, and you've all lived it for the last 18 months, right? The, the single-minded focus on cost optimization and how it has impacted um, you know, the growth opportunity for service providers in this period. Um, you can see this, you know, we came off COVID, things were great, lots of investment happening. But since then, it's just been a very steady secular design, uh, decline uh, in the kind of uh, revenue growth that, that we are seeing. Uh, so this is aggregated for, you know, 10 service providers by revenue. Um, but things are changing at this point of time. And uh, this is, again, coming from uh, our... Uh, IT spending and staffing benchmarks that we recently published, I think only a few weeks back. Uh, this is hearing from the horse's mouth that only around 20% CIOs are now primarily focused on cost optimization, right? And this is a big change uh, and it impacts all of us here. 80% of the organizations are either, uh, of the CIOs are actually either focused on improving service levels and innovation or balancing uh, innovation and cost. So this, we believe, is a great opportunity uh, coming up right now. Uh, we've had the cost optimization story, and now is the time to actually focus on innovation as well. And that uh, makes it the right time to talk about high-velocity deals. And the way you know we defined it in the morning, um, this is not just you know rapid transactions. This is also high quality transactions, whether it's related to margins or time to speed, uh, speed to signature, et cetera. So I, I think if you, if you look at the previous chart as well, there's a lot of focus on improving service over cost. And that, again, some of the conversations that we've been having in your large crown jewels incumbency, that's also going to be very, you know, very, very important. So the senior executives there are looking at not just cost, but then also the service part of it. So each of these parameters become important, whether it's a new logo for you, whether it's a renewal logo for you, uh, how do we get there faster, the speed to signature part of it, how do we construct and solution them, whether it's a new transaction for you, or you're re-architecting, re-solutioning a particular existing account, and there's a lot of opportunity, and we'll talk to you about it, uh, on how you restructure, re-solution it, so that there is more margin, there's opportunity to invest, uh, there's opportunity to drive vertical solutions into it. And then obviously you can do that, especially from an incumbent perspective, largely in a sole source or a less competitive environment. That gives you the, the ability to do it faster, uh, do it more meaningfully uh, with the customer so that you, you, you're ahead of the game rather than being, being reactive, right? So th those are obviously the themes that we've been speaking throughout the day and you're, you're seeing it uh, on, on our thoughts on how we want to bring all of the components that Avasant has. So if you move to the next one. Um, and I, when I spoke last year, I think a lot of our investment, if you think of Avasant, we're really a deal maker company, a deal enabler company, right? So all of the investments that we've been doing in the last several years, especially the last five, six years, is everything is about making the art of the deal, you know, making the deal possible, making a better deal for our customers, your customers. So, you know, whether it's research, uh, we spoke, I spoke to several of you, you know, how that can help top of the funnel, how it helps in a sole source uh, um, uh, context. Uh, so, so there's a lot of information around your, not just big marquee providers like yourselves, but then also the up and coming, the, uh, the tech innovators, all of that information gives our client the confidence that they're making the right bets with the right service providers. Benchmarking, sole source, Kevin talked about 65%, 70% of our work being sole source. A big part of that really is benchmarking. And we'll talk to you about how that comes together, whether it's a renewal situation or a, or a new client situation. Um, and that's really fundamental because it gives clients the comfort um, and, 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 and confidence that they can do, they are doing the deal at the right level. 
um, they can go back to the boards, they can go back to the executive committees and, and get approval on those, those sole source transactions. Um, of course, AI, AI consulting, I spoke earlier today as well. Um, each of these deals is being solutioned, is being architected you know, uh, uh, very differently. It has to have a significant component of the AI-led transformation. Uh, how is it gonna look today? 24 months from now and, and, and five years from now. That's absolutely important. So, and that also ties in with the benchmarking bit, by the way, because how, how are we going to drive investment, efficiency, productivity, and the top line transformation for those customers? So absolutely important for us, um, and we are making a lot of investment there uh, on retooling our advisors, our consultants, our research, um, so all of that. I think Matt also talked about some of the investments that we're doing from an AI perspective uh, on the governance part of it. So whether it's the strategy work for us personally or the transaction work or the governance work, we're trying to disrupt each of those uh, leveraging AI. Okay? And then, of course, uh, the governance and, and, and uh, Matt and Andre and Mike did a great job, I think, capturing how do we preserve those deals? You know, of course, we write a beautiful contract. There's a there's a lot of good, you know, everybody's happy, the client's happy, you guys are happy, but they tend to lose the value over, over the next three, four, five years. They don't realize the value. So that's why the value creation, value creation office, uh, having the right tools, frameworks, is important to preserve the deal. And what I think, and, and we'll speak briefly in addition to what uh, Matt was sharing, uh, giving you as service providers the insights uh, the, the account intel in that particular account, how you're doing, what your NPS is, is what, uh, how you stack up from a service level perspective. That gives you the right information so that when 12, 18 months before the renewal, you are very, very well prepared uh, to make that happen. So all of our investments, uh, you know, really geared, again, doing the right deal, preserving the right deal, and then when it comes to, you know, actually extending, uh, we are able to demonstrate the value to the customer. Yeah. And now if we really look at it, look at um, how it actually comes together, right? So we want to take a couple of examples of what we've done over the last 12 months. And these are interesting situations. I'll, I'll speak about a couple of uh, situations where you're looking for new opportunities and, and how to build them out. Now, for the last 12 months, I think uh, the biggest question that all providers have had, okay, we know AI is important. We know we want to include AI into our deals, but how do we make sure that we are not making any commitments that are, you know, a little damaging for us, a little too much, right? What is the right way of actually approaching uh, including generative AI in, in, in IT and BPO offerings? So this is something that uh, we, we work together uh, with, a, with a leading service provider, um, um, you know, who's, who's actually in this room as well. Um, for this, we basically brought together uh, a lot of our research, which is the market pulse research that we do around generative AI. This is how we're looking at all the key trends in the space uh, related to the technology, uh, related to how uh, different organizations are looking to uh, apply generative AI. And then also bringing a layer of our AI consulting, the investments that Akshay was talking about uh, a little while ago. Uh, so we focused on this and tried to figure out a few key things, you know. Uh, what are uh, the productivity glide paths that can be actually committed uh, uh, by the service provider in this case? Uh, what kind of commercial models uh, will emerge? And this is, as you can well imagine, this is the part where everyone was kind of floundering and trying to figure out what's the best commercial model to take to the market. Uh, so we do. We did this analysis, uh, and uh, you know this was a long, very engaged uh, kind of a kind of a project that we did with the service provider. At the end of which, this provider was actually one of the first to be able to integrate uh, or incorporate, uh, you know, the Gen AI productivity commitments in their project in their uh, deals as a separate line item. I mean, it started happening a lot more now, but. These were the, amongst the first ones that did that. They were able to use this to have more confidence of going into the market and create a much larger pipeline of newer deals. Uh, so this, I think, is a, is a great 
example of how we work with providers, bring together our research, bring together our consulting jobs, bring together our understanding of enterprises, and get it all together into a great offering, not just on the solution side, but also on the commercial side, commitment side, and all of that. This obviously helped with a lot of uh, new uh, wins for, for the provider. And, and I think most, just sorry, just to yeah. add, I think it helps them raise the bar. It helps them, you know, uh, put a stake in the ground. Uh, and whether it's, you know, Gen AI related offerings, I think this, obviously there's this work that's happening on the industry 4.0 side. So there's several different opportunities where can you go get ahead and, and put a stake in the ground having right market competitive client intelligence that brings it all together so that uh, you're really seen as the, as the thought leader player in the market. So. Yeah. The second one that I'd like to talk about, again, from a, from a new um, uh, deal perspective, and this is an interesting situation where uh, the, uh, the US-based real estate brokerage firm uh, had already kind of decided or agreed upon with a service provider on, uh, on uh, uh, you know, offerings around uh, broker advertising, web design, f and HR, you know, classical uh, uh, business processes. But here, they actually brought us in primarily to validate whether the offer, offering uh, or the proposal that was, that was made to them was really meeting the market requirements or not. Is it better than the market uh, and more beneficial for the end customer or not, right? Uh, this was a necessary, um, you know, spoke in the wheel for primarily ensuring that the deal remains a sole source deal rather than getting into a competitive situation, which, which no one likes. Uh, and of course, uh, to make sure that the price and the solution benchmarks are up to scratch and better than market. Uh, this was very interesting for us. I think, uh, you know, again, we did a lot of price and solution benchmarking to validate the proposal against everything that we've seen in the market having access to other deals to to end customers obviously helps us in doing a real benchmark which is you know which can be seen on the ground uh, instead of you know more theory uh, we also actually as a as as something that we added to the to the deal went ahead and helped build out a transformation roadmap again these are all ways in which we engage with the end customer to try to make the deal better for the service provider as well. It just makes increases the scope of the engagement as well. Uh, again, most importantly, it received the board approval uh, for the sole selection. So it was a sole source deal, which never went into a competitive uh, situation at all. Uh, we negotiated, negotiated uh, good savings objectives with the client and created that transformation map, which could then be a, a map against which the governance mechanism was established. So these are a couple of new deal areas, you know, in, in how we have supported service providers in, in bringing together all the elements of, of Avasant uh, together. And I think yeah. just to add, the, you know, this is also a classical example of how our own business is getting disrupted. Five years ago, we would have done the strategy work at the client, helping them identify which parts of their process areas to do. Uh, we would have helped them run the entire transaction process. We would have helped them write the right statements of work, you know, do the entire evaluation and whatnot. But here, really, we are coming in only as at, at part of the, the process. But that's an important part of the process, uh, and we are able to do it because we are able to bring all of the data assets, the IP, and help them really structure the right deal, get the market validation from it, and ensuring that whatever objectives they have, it also aligns with how the service provider can realistically deliver it. Uh, because there's no point, service provider is obviously very happy, and if you see, this was brought to us by a service provider. So it's in their interest also to structure it in a manner where everybody's interested, interests are aligned, um, financial savings um, can be delivered, and transformation can happen. Otherwise, it's just um, it's not gonna happen, and then you know, obviously the service provider will, will have a very tough time you know, uh, during the term of the deal. So again, a great example of you know, how our role also is changing and how clients are using us differently. So we, we saw a couple of those examples uh, really more on net new. Uh, this, this is an example of really a renewal situation. I've had several conversations today. Uh, a lot of you uh, are obviously focused on you know, 
what's what's the new logos you know what, you know what what are the new accounts um, getting into your existing crown jewels is difficult and hard but this is also an example where when done correctly there is preservation of the account and there is expansion in the account so pretty large deal um, this this particular service provider had been in the account for almost 15 plus years so you can imagine it was just getting renewed every 5 years and the SOWs, the service levels, the governance structure had not really been refreshed to reflect the current realities. Now, at least there was you know, awareness of that and, and it was proactively, uh, we were pro proactively brought in to look at how this can be restructured, how this can be, re uh, I mean, can be uh, marked to market um, and you, know, you refresh the entire deal construct, deal structure. So, uh, of course, you know there, there was a little bit of savings that came out, but most importantly, there was expansion of deal value. There was simplification in the contract structure. This is you know 30 plus countries or something like that, uh, uh, 14 countries. Um, there was a lot because this was written really you know in in a context of 10 years, 15 years ago. So a lot of things had changed. The provider was not able to bring in the productivity elements. The product provider was not able to make those investments. And in a lot of times we will see the 50% of the issue or, or the effort that is required is really from the client's perspective. So when we were brought in as, as a neutral independent party here, we were a able to make those very objective recommendations, which some of those service providers, uh, so the service provider here had to do. And then there were some that the client um, uh, was tasked with. And, and we were able to make that case and able to successfully um, uh, uh, you know, increase the scope, um, increase the deal value, and, and then renew it for another, um, uh, uh, another term. So this is an example of, again, I think being proactive, um, uh, getting ahead 12, 18 months from the renewal cycle, and then at least uh, preserving and expanding the deal. So this, um, again, um, is a great example of how we want to continue to preserve and expand the deals. Uh, I think uh, the previous panel did a great job talking about it. Um, we've had Avasense as a governance platform for a long time, but uh, what we've introduced this year is really this Avasense Flex, where this becomes really the, the closed ecosystem uh, that, that Matt and Mike and Andre talked about, which really, obviously, the fundamentals or the underpinnings of this is really from how do you just keep the engine running? How do you keep it you know, going? So, so whether it's through process automation, governance automation, and whatnot. But overall, the, the, val the, the, the impact really happens in this value creation office. We've had every single client coming in. You, we sign a great deal. We identify the business case. But three years into the deal, the business case starts to erode, sometimes even sooner. And you know, by the time they get to the fourth year, the fifth year, you know, there's, there's just too much deviation from you know, what, where they want it to be and where they are. So this really allows the clients to keep uh, a, a very you know, tight control on how they're running uh, in a very dispassionate way using technology. Uh, and then most importantly, what it opens up for service providers, if you go to the next one, it allows them to use the data that comes out of it to not just optimize and, and really have a great understanding of uh, where they stand in that ecosystem, but then also use that intelligently to keep farming into new opportunities and new accounts. Like I think Matt talked about um, really operating in that closed ecosystem within, the, within that account and, and the, the series of work orders and, and expansion opportunities that keep coming. So we're really excited about it. I think it allows and it, it serves, it's a win-win for both the client and the service provider. It gives you access to data and, and insights uh, to be able to make the right decisions for that particular account that you have. So um, again, I think there is a there is a demo booth there. We can we can certainly talk and um, have more discussions on how this could apply to to some of your existing accounts or or net new accounts. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, these were some of the examples that we wanted to talk about uh, on how we engage. Uh, I think just in closing, I think if there is one message that you take away from the entire day, to be honest, is really what Kevin talked about, uh, is that now is the time to focus on those high velocity deals. Look at the deals from a more holistic manner along these five elements that we, that we described. Uh, and yes, I think uh, this is the focus, this is the one message that I would 
like to leave everyone uh, over here with. This is the time for high velocity deals. Please focus on uh, the good deals. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I think hopefully we've shared enough of examples. Um, leverage us. Uh, we're all, all about the art of the deal. We want to make good deals. Um, uh, each of your accounts, each of your deals is going to be unique. Um, not all of this would apply, but we've, we've built, invested into tools, platforms, advisory, where we can tailor it to each of those specific situations that you have so that not only able, are you able to grow, uh, expand, retain, all of that can happen. So, so client's happy, you're happy, we're happy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.